we have seen acoustoptic diffraction a coupling of small Bragg angle and large Bragg angle. We used uh, the um, scalar wave uh, formulation to understand the uh, principle of coupling, the relation between the uh, capital K vectors, small k vectors, k plus vectors and the Bragg condition. And uh, now, we will use altogether uh, <coughs> a different uh, uh, mechanism that is uh, using the rigorous vector formulation for the coupling of uh, the uh, diffraction uh, from the incident wave to the diffracted wave. This mechanism we will study and we will be discussing under the following heads that uh, the vector wave equation in part up medium incident and transmitted field amplitude will try to write. Uh, those equations, then we will formulate that coupled mode equation, coupling coefficient, then a very uh, interesting aspect that uh, we will see is the polarization coupling. If we have some incident polarization, we will see that it can be coupled to a different polar eigen polarization of the system. So, this polarization analysis of the diffracted wave and we will also study the example cases for longitudinal and shear acoustic waves in both isotropic and anisotropic media. Therefore, we start with the permittivity uh, relation that is uh, the acoustic wave modulates the refractive index of the medium in this way, uh, this we have seen assuming that <coughs> the acoustic wave is uh, traveling along the z direction. This is the permittivity uh, in absence of any uh, acoustic wave permittivity of the medium that is unperturbed permittivity and this is the peak change in the permittivity due to the uh, traveling acoustic wave and we assume that the wave is traveling along the z direction. And then we also consider keeping the same uh, notation, the same configuration uh, that the incident light e propagates in the x z plane. Therefore, <coughs> so this is the schematic representation we have seen that the acoustic wave is traveling along the z direction and the incident optical beam is traveling almost along the x direction very close to the x axis with a very small angle that is why we call this a small Bragg angle diffraction we have seen and this is the undiffracted that is the 0th order beam and this will be the coupling uh, the B of the first order beam, this is the direction and uh, this point is from the x axis, it is x equal to 0 and it is x equal to L. This length L will be used for the interaction for defining the interaction length and hence the coupling coefficient and this is the periodic variation of the per part of the permittivity because of the traveling acoustic wave. So, let us uh, by now we have seen that uh, using the scalar wave equation, uh, wave equation we, we have seen that uh, we can write the um, wave equation for the electric field in this form del square E equal to mu naught del 2 del D which is equal to this. So, this is on the basis that is on the ground that uh, because uh, we assume that we assume that omega uh, is much much less than the small omega. The acoustic frequency is of the order of 10 to the power of 6 and whereas, this is of the order of 10 to the power of 14 to 15. So, this is uh, quite negligible and the light wave C is a stationary grating. Therefore, even though this is within this mm, del square del T square within this, but still this T variation uh, will be treated as almost a constant. So, that is the time variation of this quantity uh, this delta E sin of omega T minus k z is negligible as seen by the electric field because electric field time variation is at a much higher frequency. Therefore, that helps in simplifying uh, the wave equation. So, if we take this outside this time variation then we can write that mu naught delta E sin of omega T minus k z 
and then del 2 e del t square. So, this is the reduced form of the wave equation which he used in the scalar wave uh, equation formulation. So, this is the same equation, but now we will consider the, this equation uh, as a rigorous vectorial wave equation. So, the vector wave equation for the propagation of the light beam through this Bragg Acosta optic system will be represented by this which is similar to this equation. You can see this del square and mu naught epsilon and part of epsilon and this relation which appears here, but here it is the tensor and delta E that is again the uh, permittivity change tensor. So, this is the form of the vector wave equation where E is the electric field vector now and this total permittivity uh, is equal to this unpart of permittivity tensor plus this change permittivity. So, which represents the permittivity tensor of the medium in presence of the traveling acoustic wave. So, this is the total change. Now, considering the time dependence of the electric field, this e to the power of i omega ta and we have seen that uh, the right hand side of this <coughs> wave equation will contain uh, terms which are proportional to e to the power of i omega plus capital omega t and i omega minus capital omega t. This we have seen. So, they are proportional and as a result uh, the diffracted wave will contain will contain frequencies which are uh, proportional to which will be omega plus omega and omega minus omega and there exist three electric fields in the system. This also we have seen one will be the incident wave and the two others are the plus order diffracted wave electric field and electric field corresponding to the minus order diffracted field. So, this uh, total electric field will be uh, will consist of this incident electric field uh, the plus order electric field and minus order even though both plus and minus order cannot coexist one of them will be existing, but for completeness uh, we write this E total field equal to sum of all these three and the first term it represent the incident second term the plus order and the third term the minus order. Here this E 0, E plus and E minus they are the polarization of the electric field of the corresponding uh, incident diffracted plus order and minus order fields. So, this E 0 is the incident polarization of the incident wave, polarization of the plus order and polarization of the minus order. So, we substitute this E in the wave equation, in this equation we substitute this sum of the three quantities. So, <coughs> and then in the same way we can separate out the terms which are proportional to E to the power of i omega t omega plus omega t omega minus omega t in the same way as we did for the scalar wave and then we end up with the set of these three equations, but this time they are vector wave equations. So, this can these are the polarization of the plus order polarization of the minus order. So, it is very straightforward and simple from there and we can write the three equations. Now, we will use this uh, the same uh, approach as we adopted in the case of small Bragg angle that the light wave is traveling almost along the direction along the x direction and then we can approximate we can use the same formulation, but in between that del square epsilon this E 0 E we can write this equal to this quantity and similarly for the plus and minus order polarization we can write this you can take out this this E plus minus outside and this is the uh, polarization vector. So, also in order that these relations are consistent this E 0 and E plus minus they must be the eigen polarization of the system. That is in Cartesian system it must be x y or z. Similarly, this will be also x y or z. If the wave is traveling along the z direction as in the present case then it can have two polarization that is x or y similarly this can have two polarization 
that those are x and y. So, in Cartesian system you can nicely write this relation and uh, this e plus minus should be along the direction given by this, because they are associated with delta you will see this we will see this now. So, this these three equations will again lead to the in the same way that if you pre multiply this equation with this E 0 dagger E plus and E minus from the left side these are the row vectors these are row vectors and you have a column vector on the uh, right hand side you can see you have this E 0 this is a column vector and here also you have a column vector if you multiply with this E 0 dagger then you can get rid of this polarization here and you can write this equation, but on the right hand side because it was the column vector was E 0, but you are multiply E, Z, e plus or E minus then you are pre multiplying with E 0. So, they will give rise to this new quantity which is a scalar delta E because they are eigen polarization. So, it will uh, give you only a scalar quantity and similarly for this equation and similarly for this equation. Now, uh, <coughs> this because you are uh, so these quantities E 0 and you are pre multiplying with this. So, they will give you a scalar quantity here also this will give you a scalar quantity and here for these quantities for these these terms delta plus E delta plus minus E. So, you get this quantity because you are you have already this and you are pre multiplying with this quantity. So, these are all scalars. So, the incident and diffracted waves C unperturbed refractive different in unperturbed refractive indices. So, they, they, they are different in general. Now, proceeding in the similar way for solving uh, these equations that uh, we approximate that the um, x dependent of the of the electric field of the incident beam is negligible, then uh, we arrive at this the in the proceeding in the same way we arrived at this uh, coupling co coefficient which is given by this. This you have seen it is the same thing that we have already uh, derived in the earlier occasion for the case of scalar wave uh, formulation. And for small Bragg angle scattering you also have seen that beta plus minus they are obtained from this equation. So, all these things are valid except that they are now vectors. So, but effectively this is a scalar. So, the coupling coefficient will be a scalar multiplied by the quantity this. So, the task lies uh, in um, to calculate this uh, delta epsilon this tensor and if we know the incident polarization we can calculate the diffracted polarization. because this has to be a scalar. So, for small uh, for alpha and alpha plus minus will be determined from these key conditions. This also we have seen um, repeatedly that this alpha square must be equal to this minus this and alpha plus minus will be the same quantity, but for the plus or minus order diffracted wave. Now, the maximum diffraction efficiency uh, will occur when alpha plus minus is equal to plus and delta alpha equal to 0. This condition we have seen earlier also and in that case this alpha plus minus this will become only alpha. So, you get the coupling coefficient under the Bragg condition which will be just omega square mu by 4 alpha and this quantity this quantity which will be a scalar again. <coughs> and uh, we will now study because we have seen this coupling coefficient we will now study the uh, specific uh, cases example cases to understand uh, in a better way that how this uh, coupling from the incident wave coupling of the polarization takes place to the to the diffracted beams whether it is plus order diffracted or minus order diffracted. So, for that we take an example uh, of uh, a longitudinal acoustic wave that is traveling along the z direction. We remember that the longitudinal this compression and reflection that happens along the z direction and uh, and uh, and uh, then the propagation constant uh, is uh, k into z 
uh, and uh, this is actually uh, the u x uh, u z equal to u of z. So, u suffix z is equal to this and in this case because uh, this is a longitudinal wave that is propagating along z direction. So, it will give rise to only tensile strain components and that is only one component. So, the only non-zero tensile strain component in this case will be S z z which is not equal to 0 rest all other components will be 0. So, so we obtain that the, the strain matrix uh, which is by now we are very familiar. So, it is only the S 3 component z z S z z component will be uh, will be non 0 and which is equal to del u z del z because it is the variation of z u z along the z direction that is the non zero quantity. So, we get that S 3 equal to this. Now, we can use this to calculate the change in the impermeability and hence the change in the permittivity tensor. So, for an isotropic medium this is the form of the uh, photoelastic coefficients the strain optic tensor this we have seen at various occasions. Now, uh, in this case we can calculate the change in the impermeability in presence of the strain by taking the strain into account. So, this is again the compressed notation. So, this all the uh, 3 by 3 matrix has appeared as a column vector here and it is only the S 3 that is non 0 which will make only these columns non 0 rest all of them will be 0. So, if you multiply S 3 and P 1 2 S 3 and P 1 2 and S 3 and P 1 1 they will occupy the diagonal positions and that you can see from here. So, delta E these three quantities will be occupying the diagonal positions. So, that is your delta eta that is the impermeability uh, change in the impermeability tensor and for an isotropic medium this is the form of the permittivity tensor in the principal axis system all of them are n square n square n square. So, we have to post multiply and pre multiply with the row uh, with the uh, with these uh, two matrices from this side and this side. Therefore, <coughs> therefore, the transpose and this matrix from the uh, as a post and pre multiplier will give you uh, this form that is a minus epsilon 0 and this permittivity uh, permittivity tensor and here it is the permittivity tensor which is uh, then on multiplication with this and then on multiplication with this we will get n to the power of 4 out and inside we will be able to retain the same form because of this uh, the specific nature of the, the form of this. So, they are all diagonal elements. So, you will retain only the diagonal elements n to the power of 4 will be out. So, this will be the change in the uh, permittivity tensor. So, that is what we were looking for in order to calculate uh, the coupling coefficient as well as the, the polarization of the diffracted wave when we know the polarization of the incident wave. So, let us see that now the case is the one which we are studying is a longitudinal acoustic wave which is traveling along the z direction and we find that the change in the permittivity tensor as this form this for this particular case. So, they have only the diagonal elements and so now the case is that the example is that let us consider an incident light wave which is propagating along x and polarized along y direction. So, it is x propagating wave and the polarization is along y. So, we have we can write that incident beam polarization as 0 1 0 and then we will have to multiply post multiply with this. You can see this we multiply this uh, with this polarization 0 1 because it is y polarized wave and propagating along x direction. The other possibility is it could be x polarized wave propagating along uh, no sorry this is uh, your x propagating wave. So, it can have y polarization or z polarization. So, the other possibility is it can have z polarization as well in the incident beam if the incident beam is propagating along x direction 
that is the case that we are studying because your acoustic wave is along the z direction and uh, the optical wave is propagating along x direction. So, an x propagating optical wave can have two polarizations these are y polarization or z polarization. So, in this case we consider the incident wave is polarized in the along the y direction. So, on multiplying this this E 0 with this uh, uh, permittivity matrix if we multiply we will get this form which and finally, you get this form which suggests that if it has to be a scalar then you have to multiply pre multiply with this vector pre multiply with this vector look at this. So, that means, the the diffracted beam the polarization of the diffracted beam will also be y polarized the diffracted beam is also y polarized. So, what we get from here is that if the incident beam optical beam is x polarized uh, uh, y polarized the diffracted beam is also y polarized because of the nature of the the change in the permittivity, permittivity tensor. And we can repeat the same uh, same procedure for for z polarized wave in the same way and in this case. So, this to get a more uh, clear picture about what is happening you have an acoustic wave which is travelling along the z direction which is travelling along the z direction and the incident wave optical wave light beam is travelling along x direction very close to x direction and it has y polarization. This wave has y polarization when it is diffracted out whether it is plus order or minus order the case we studied then it is again y polarized. That means, in this case for the case of longitudinal acoustic wave the polarization of the incident optical beam is not changed it remains the same. Thus, in case of y polarized incident light that emerges out from the acoustic cell as a y polarized diffracted light. So, there is no change in the polarization because of the coupling due to diffraction in this case. So, what we have discussed uh, in the in the in this case is that you can um, use this vector wave equation model to to um, identify the polarization content of the using the no know, knowing the incident uh, beam polarization what will be the polarization of the diffracted beam when the wave is a uh, longitudinal wave acoustic wave that is traveling in the medium. We will study the shear wave uh, and then also we will study the uh, acoustic wave in an anisotropic medium. So, in summary we discussed in this uh, uh, case that the vector wave equation and then incident and transmitted field amplitude how we can write then we uh, uh, rewrite the coupled wave equations coupling coefficients in a way which is similar to the scalar wave formulation and then we uh, <coughs> looked for the coupling of the polarization from the incident wave to the diffracted wave. And in the present case we studied uh, when the acoustic wave is uh, a longitudinal wave and for small diffraction Bragg angle diffraction we saw that the polarization uh, coupling uh, it remains the same the, the incident polarization and the um, diffracted waves polarization they are the same. And in the next case we will consider an isotropic, me isotropic medium, but for uh, shear wave and also an isotropic medium with shear wave propagation in the acoustic cell. Thank you very much.